Today we're going to create a game that is actually like an application where people can pick colors and paint and draw. We're going to be using paint box behaviors today. So to get ready, I need you to set up your director file. What am I asking you to do? First off, let's create an eraser button. Don't forget to use your tools classic. Call it erase all. Erase all. You'll notice that if I blow it up. It says erase all. Then import a picture of an eraser and import a brush of some kind. I picked a brush that looks like this and I rotated it 180 degrees. In addition, you're going to create a paint palette. And the paint palette is literally just a series of squares, each of a different color. So I used my tools and my rectangle on the side in order to create my different colors. All right. Go ahead and do that now. Pause this video. You're going to set it up on the stage. So at this time, you should have on your stage a paint palette of six colors. In addition, you should have a graphic of an eraser, a graphic of a brush, and an erase all button. To continue, you need to create the area where the painting is going to take place. So I created that in my 10th cast member. And all I did was go into my bitmap tools in my paint window and I drew a rectangle there. I used an off-white. Don't worry about its size. You can make its size on the stage. In addition, I created another bitmap using the ellipse tool. And I just did the size that I would want the brush to be. So here it is. It's just a small, and I use just black, a small black circle. So notice that in my cast. Go ahead and do that now. So we're making our canvas and we're making our brush size. Once you're done with that, go back to the stage and drag the canvas onto the stage. Size it as big as you want. I made my stage size 640 by 480. You can pick any stage size that you want, but just don't make it too small. You want to give the user a place where they can actually paint. At this point, we now want to take our paint box behaviors and add them to our cast. So, go into your library. In your library, notice right above text is paint box. Take all of those behaviors and drop them right into your cast. We will be using all of them. Let's take a moment now to look at these behaviors. The first behavior is canvas. This behavior is used with a bitmap member. They like you to use 32-bit and that's the default. This allows the user to paint into the member of the sprite. We're going to drag and drop that behavior onto our canvas. Notice what appears. So we have the color of the default paintbrush. Zero, zero, zero. Guess what color that is? That is black. They will be able to change the color by clicking on their palette that you have created, believe it or not. Notice that you also have the default shape of the paintbrush. We're using a circle. But look at your options. If you want to use a square, you can. Look at the background. Is it opaque or is it an original image? For us, since we're not coloring in a picture, we're leaving it opaque. And what is the background color? Here it is. This is your opaque kind of image. All right. So we are now ready to work. But please note, there is an error in this behavior. So we're going to have to modify this behavior. Open up the behavior by double-clicking on the canvas behavior. 
scroll down to line 121, 121, the P timeout object. We have to make a change to this line. The change is going to be take out the quotes with the canvas timeout one. Delete that. Do a control X to cut it because we're going to put it in a new location. We're going to stick it inside the parentheses. So put your cursor before the P time interval and paste control V. Okay. Now put a comma after the canvas timeout one and a space. So what we're doing here is P timeout object equals the timeout function dot new and this is where the canvas timeout one belongs, comma, keep the remaining of this line, keep the remainder of this line. So this is a fix that had to be made in director 11.5. In the new director, this has already been fixed. Okay, we're now ready to continue. So what I want to show you is how did when we opened up our parameters for our canvas, how do we know what these colors are? Well, these colors are the red, the green, and the blue that make up the color canvas. To determine what those numbers are, you can simply go into your color picker. So let me cancel this, and I'm going to click on my color tools. I could do it here, or I could do it in my toolbox. And if I click down once, do you see how I have a color picker? In the color picker, notice the red, the green, the blue? It's white. So I just want to show you that here is where you get those numbers that define the opaque color for your canvas. So since we have now applied the canvas behavior to the canvas and we identify, we know what the color opaque means and what the 255 for the red, green, and blue means, Let's now add some behaviors that we are used to using. First thing that I'd like you to do is get hold on current frame and put it at the end of your scene. So it's going into the script channel as it has in all the other interactive movies that have used scenes. Hold on current frame. We're going to take a rollover cursor change as well. Put that on top of the canvas. So I'm just going to drag and drop it onto the canvas. I'm just going to use the finger, but if you wanted to change to a custom cursor, you certainly could. So when I look at my canvas, I have my canvas script, which we modified, and my rollover cursor change. All right, let's start applying the other paint box t behaviors to the objects on the stage. We're also going to be adding that hold on current frame. So first, let's do our color set. Highlight the colors. So here I go. I'm highlighting my colors. Let's drag and drop color set onto those objects. Notice how you have the color selector. There's no double clicking. There's no nothing to edit. It knows it's going to pick the color when you click on that box. Let's add a rollover cursor change. And it's the finger. So we've added our rollover to our panel of colors. We also have an eraser here. The eraser is the undo paint behavior. So I'm going to click on my undo paint and drag and drop it onto the eraser. So when it clicks, it acts like an undo. Let's now go to my button, which is the erase all. And that is my erase all behavior. So click and drag erase all on top of my erase all button. Do I want them to double click? Nah, it's your choice. I'm going to say single click. Hit OK. Let me add my rollovers to those two items. Now I need to choose my paintbrush. This gets a little tricky. Do you remember that dot of paint that determined the size of our brush? 
Here it's in cast member 11. Where did you draw that dot of paint? So I can now need to know my cast member. Click on your brush. We want to use our tool selection. So we're going to drop the tool select over the brush and a pop-up window appears. It says, what bitmap member do you want to use for the brush? I'm going to change it, not three, that's where my paintbrush is. I want the size of the brush, that was my dot, that's cast member in my case, 11. Notice where it says, adopt the current color, yes. Use it transparent, yes. Use the default brush on for the canvas, yes. You must link this and hit OK. All right, you're now ready to play this movie. You're now ready to see if you paint. One thing that I want to let you know, when you draw your canvas, your canvas should be one of the first sprites on the stage. So if you have your canvas in, let's say, sprite channel 8, 9, 10, 11, click on it, go to modify, and you want to go to arrange, and you want to say, move it backwards or send it back send it back so it goes to the first channel. You could also click and drag if you wish. So you want to put the canvas actually in size one. So let's rewind. Let me make some more room here so you can see if it works. And let's play the movie. So I'm going to click on a color and I'm going to paint. There I am. I'm painting. I can click on another color and I can paint again. And if I don't want that, I can click Erase and paint my other color and Erase All. It's all gone and I can start from scratch. You've just created a paint box. Now, here is your goal. Add a title using Swish. Draw a picture. So you have a title on this canvas. Now I want you to think about, we created one size of the paintbrush Let's create multiple sizes of the paintbrush. Give me three different sizes. And then save and publish your movie. And you've created a paint box. Good job.